Wars on, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we have got one more house to look at. We have been going through over the last few days every single new card in the new Keyforge expansion, Worlds Collide. But we haven't actually gone through the Grand Star Alliance cards yet. So let's do that now, shall we? Like with the Saurian Republic, this is a brand new house in Worlds Collide. That is to say... Every single card is new, so there's way too many, over 50. We cannot do them all in one video. So what we're going to do is do all the creatures in this video, and I'll be back in a couple hours with a second video where we can talk about, well, actions, upgrades, and artifacts. So let's start off, we'll go through set order as we always do, with Arms Master Melina. A 4 power, 0 armor creature with hazardous free. That is to say, if you want to attack Arms Master Melina, you've got to take free damage before the fight even happens. Then you get to decide how much damage you're doing or not. So a creature with 3 power or less will literally get destroyed before the fight even happens. And in case that's not good enough, both of Arms Master Melina's neighbours also get Hazardous Free. So now we've got three creatures in a line, all with Hazardous Free. That sounds good to me. Chief Engineer Walls, and as a side note, I adore the design of the Grand Star Alliance and the fact that you've actually got a proper crew all with their own rank and titles and jobs. It makes me kind of happy. The so Chief Engineer Walls is a 2 power, 0 armor creature with elusive. That is to say, the first time it is attacked during a turn, nothing happens. You deal no damage, they deal no damage, it's like the fight never happened. you got to break the elusive before you attack. And you break it by attacking. And then you attack again. Yay! And when you play, or fight, or reap, i.e. do anything, you may return an upgrade or robot card from your discard pile to your hand. And I'm going to give it away a little bit just in case I forget to mention it later. The robot cards are really cool because they actually turn into upgrades. That's how you know they're robots. Cool. This gets all of your upgrades back. At the very worst, you can just keep grabbing upgrades with amber bonuses. At the very best, you basically have the upgrades you want pretty much the entire time. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me, ladies and gentlemen. That sounds pretty good to me. Com Officer Kirby, I adore, and it's not just because it reminds me of the little pink ball. It is a free power, zero armor creature. And when you play, or fight, or reap, you may play a non-star alliance artifact, upgrade, or action this turn. That is to say, anything other than a creature. It's house cheating. And house cheating is good. This is a kind of thing we've learned to expect from logos with cards like Phase Shift in Call of the Archons and Helper Bot in Age of Ascension. What we have is just an opportunity to play a card from a different house during a Grand Star Alliance turn. It's absolutely wonderful. We've all had those decks that don't have upgrade removal or artifact hate or key cheating in one house, but do in another, Kirby's got your back. Commander Chan is a four power, zero armor creature. And when you fight or reap, you use another friendly creature. Now the good news is it doesn't say friendly Grand Star Alliance creature. The bad news is it doesn't say ready and use. So it doesn't let you use a Grand Star Alliance creature twice. But it does let you use a non Grand Star Alliance creature. It allows you to house cheat. It allows you to reap once more than you should be able to. Or fight once more than you should be able to. And then, of course, you've got all of the fight, reap skills, or action, or whatever that you do at the same time. I adore Commander Chan because it lets you use a creature that you shouldn't be able to. And at the very least, one more reaping. You reap with him, then you reap with someone else. At the worst, it's double reaping. Because remember, you weren't going to be using those creatures anyway. And they're ready at the end of your turn anyway. Explorover is a free power, zero armor creature, and it is a robot. It's got skirmish, which is to say if you start the fight, you do not take any damage back. Kind of like the opposite of elusive, kind of. 
And it may be played as an upgrade instead of a creature with the text, this creature gains skirmish. So either you play it as a free power zero armor creature with skirmish, or you play it as an upgrade to give another creature skirmish. Either way, it's pretty cool. First Officer Frayne is a 4 power 0 armor creature and when you play or fight or reap a friendly creature captures an amber. Now captures not as good as stealing, you put an amber on one of your creatures and when that creature is destroyed your opponent gets the amber back. But they don't have it at the beginning of their next turn to try and forge a key. It's cool. I like it. Then of course we've got cards like Axiom of Grisk that destroy each creature that doesn't have an amber on. Yeah, this is pretty good. Lieutenant Kaka is a 5 power 0 armor creature with taunt. That is to say you cannot attack its neighbors, you have to attack it. And it's got Hazardous Free, just like we saw with Arms Master Melina. So here, okay... You don't give your neighbors hazardous free, but you've got to go after Kakar. You cannot go after its neighbors, and you've got to take hazardous free, i.e. free damage in the process. That's one that's going to annoy your opponent. Medic Ingram I am in love with, although the cute little lizard on her shoulder does help. Free power, zero armor, and when you play or fight or reap, you may heal free damage from a creature and ward it. Now, ward is a new mechanic that we see in Worlds Collide, and essentially what you do is you give a ward counter to a creature, and the next time it would be removed from play or damaged, or destroyed, you remove the ward counter, and the creature stays around. Healing free damage from a creature and then warding it is brilliant. This is phenomenal in terms of just protecting your creatures now it does say a creature so you could do this to your opponent if you're feeling particularly generous but that seems a little bit weird to me really good if you've got a creature on the board that you want to keep on the board psi officer kin can is a two power zero armor creature with elusive and after a player chooses an active house which matches no cards in play steal one amber and again this is a double-sided thing so if your opponent chooses a house that doesn't match any cards in play you steal an amber so if your opponent wants to go shadows but there are no shadows upgrades artifacts or creatures in play from you or your opponent then you get to steal an amber and the funny thing is that your opponent's going to know that this is going to happen your opponent is going to be on notice unless they just don't bother looking at what's on your board so they're going to be in an awkward situation where they want to choose shadows but they know that choosing shadows means that you get to steal an amber it's very fun sensor chief garcia is a free power zero armor creature and when you play or fight or reap Keys cost plus two during your opponent's next turn. Now, the bad news is that unlike Lash of Broken Dreams or Rettle Gallim, you are talking plus two rather than plus three. But it's also going to fire far more often than the others. Lash of Broken Dreams works every turn except the turn you put it back because it's exhausted or put it down. And Rettle Gallim works the turn you put it down. But the problem is, if you want to use it after that, when you reap, you've got to exalt it. Put an amber on from the common pool, and then if your opponent destroys Rettle Gallim, they get the amber that started in the common pool. You're basically giving them an amber. That's not as good, and you can't use it when you fight. This is when you play, or fight, or reap, with no other downsides. It might only be plus two, but I will totally take it. Calvin! Well, C-A-L-V-1-N, but Calvin is a two-power, one-armor robot. I told you I'd point them out if I remembered. And when you fight or reap, you draw a card. Or you may put it as an upgrade onto another creature, and that creature gains when you fight or reap, you draw a card. You're probably seeing a pattern here that all of these creatures that can be upgrades do as an upgrade what they have as a creature drawing an extra card it's only one card but extra draw is good having more cards is an advantage this is a good thing maybe you draw another star alliance card that you can play or maybe you've got corm officer kirby down you draw a non-star alliance card and you play it anyway cxo tamer is a free power zero armor creature 
And when you fight or reap, you may play or use one non-star alliance card this turn. This is more house cheating, but it's better than the others. You see, Corm Officer Kirby lets you play a non-star alliance artifact upgrade or action. But this lets you do that or play a creature or use a creature or use an artifact. Now, the downside is this is a fight or reap skill, not a play fight reap like Corm Officer Kirby. And similarly, Commander Chan, when you fight or reap, you can use another friendly creature. CXO Tabor lets you use a friendly creature or artifact or play any other card. But it's not a play skill, it's just fight or reap. Either way, this is great house cheating and I love it. And you're starting to see here, there's going to be a few Star Alliance decks out there with a lot of house cheating going on. Helmsman Spears is a two power zero armor creature and when you fight or reap you may discard any number of cards from your hand and draw a card for each card discarded in this way. That's awesome. It's not giving you a card advantage. You're not getting any more cards than you had at the beginning of the turn or the beginning of the reap but what you are getting is a hand refresh. Let's say, for argument's sake, you've got two Star Alliance cards in hand out of six. What you can do is play those two, reap with Houseman Spears to gain an Amber, discard all four cards and draw four more. And maybe it doesn't actually work. Maybe you don't draw any more Star Alliance cards, but maybe you do, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe you do. Information Officer Grey is a four-power, zero-armor creature. And when you play or fight or reap, you may reveal a non-Star Alliance card from your hand and archive it. It's archiving. That's cool, right? I like this. I like this very much indeed. It's just archiving, but it's deliberate archiving. It is choosing any card you want in your hand and archiving it so that it's ready at the beginning of your next turn. Essentially, when you archive, you have to put all of your archived cards in your hand at the start of your turn, or none of them. So what you really want a lot of the time is just to archive one or two select cards so that you can pull off. Everyone's got their deck they love because of a particularly great combo. Archiving like this, where it's deliberate occasional archiving, will hopefully allow you to build up the archive as you like it and pull off that giant combo when you want it. Navigator Alley is a free power zero armor creature, and when you play or fight or reap, you look at the top three cards of your deck and put them back in any order. I mean, firstly, it's play, fight, or reap. And secondly, it's really, really good here because we don't have much searching in Keyforge at all. It's not that kind of game. And all right, it's not perfect. It's only the top three cards and all you're doing is rearranging them. But let's say you've got Houndsman Spears and there's only one card in your hand you're willing to discard. Use Navigator Rally to put the card, the best of the three, on top. And then Houndsman Spears can get the one you want. There's going to be some fun combos in Navigator Alley. Nurse Soto is a free power zero armor creature with deploy. That is to say you can put it anywhere you like in your battle line when you play it. It does not have to go on the end. And when you play or fight or reap, you heal free damage from each of Nurse Soto's neighbors. It's all right. I mean, look, let's be super clear. It's no Medic Ingram, right? It ain't no Medic Ingram. But as far as it goes, it, it, it's fine. If your opponent's spreading a bunch of damage around, a lot of the time in Keyforge, we destroy creatures or we leave them alone. But if your opponent is trying to spread a bit of damage around, this can help. Healing doesn't usually have a huge effect on many games, so that really does affect how good Nurse Soto is. Psy Officer Morpheus is a two-power, one-armor creature. I know, first creature we've seen other than Calvin that actually has armor, so that's something to be celebrated. And after you play a creature with a play effect, you trigger its play effect an additional time. This is phenomenal. Information Officer Grey can go and archive two cards rather than one.
Sensor Chief Garcia makes your opponent's keys cost plus four rather than plus two. Medic Ingram heals three damage from two creatures and wards them both. Com Officer Kirby lets you play two cards outside of house. This is brilliant. And the thing is, this is a static skill. While Psy Officer Morpheus is on the board, any play skill gets immediately replicated. That's kind of awesome. Tactical Officer Moon is a four power, zero armor creature with Assault 2. That is to say, you deal two damage before you attack. It's the opposite of Hazardous, where you deal damage before you are attacked. And when you play it, you may rearrange the creatures in a player's battle line. Either you rearrange yours or you rearrange your opponents. But certain creatures, I mean, to give a simple example, Titan Mechanic on a flank makes keys cost minus one. So if you're getting ready to reap, you put it on a flank. If your opponent's getting ready to reap, you take it off a flank. There's a million different combos you can do with this. That is just one example. Amber Tracker is a four power, zero armor creature. And when you play, you deal two damage to each enemy creature with amber on it. And the damage cannot be prevented by armor. Any creature that has exalted, any creature that has captured amber, and any creature that's had it moved over in any other way. Against the Saurian Republic, where it seems like 90% of the cards exalt, this will be amazing. But it's quite powerful as it goes, and there's going to be enough decks that focus on capturing and exalting, that this is going to give you a bunch of mileage. But there's also going to be a bunch of decks out there that don't actually do very much, or against which this will not do very much. Captain Val Jericho is flat out phenomenal. That's right, I said it. Five power, one armor is very beefy. And every house needs a leader. Captain Val Jericho is your leader here. During your turn, if Captain Val Jericho is in the center of your battle line, you may play one card that is not of the active house. Now, you've got to be in the center of your battle line. And that's up to you, right? You've got to control your battle line. You've got to make sure you're not doing silly things like leaving it on a flank. Or just not in the middle. But this is not for Grand Star Alliance turns. It is any turn and it's any active house. On a Shadows turn, you can play a non-Shadows house. On a Logos turn, you can play a non-Logos card. I said house, I meant card. On a Star Alliance turn, you can play a non-Star Alliance card. And it is any card. Creature, artifact, upgrade, action, any of them. Not only does it give you house cheating, it gives you house cheating every turn, as long as you keep it in the center of your battle line, and has very powerful stats, especially compared to the rest of the Grand Star Alliance. This might be... I think in terms of creatures, this is the best creature in the Grand Star Alliance. I'm just flicking through and double-checking I've not missed one. I think this is the best creature in the Grand Star Alliance. Given that it's the leader, you would imagine that she would be. Crash Muldoon is a free power zero armor creature with deploy so you can put it anywhere you like in your battle line and he enters play ready so you can immediately reap, immediately fight or immediately use your action whereby you use a neighboring non-star alliance creature. Yeah, just in case we hadn't had enough house cheating in the Grand Star Alliance, we've got a little bit more coming in here with Crash Muldoon. The thing is, this isn't so good. Because you're using your action here, which means no fighting, no reaping. The good news is you do get to use a creature out of house, but it is instead of Crash Muldoon, because you have to exhaust him to do this. Whereas when we're looking at CXO Tabor, you reap and you can use another creature as well. This is instead of. Dr. Driscoll is a free power, zero armor creature. I've said that a lot with the Grand Star Alliance. With elusive, and it's got an action. Heal two damage from a creature. Gain one amber for each damage healed in this way. It's kind of awesome. I said earlier I'm not a huge fan of healing because it doesn't always work out that well. It's not always that relevant. But when it's 
you can heal and get the amber, now I'm all in favour. Now, any time your opponent deals two or more damage to a creature without destroying it, you're basically gaining two amber. If you're only healing one, you're not getting any more amber than you would reaping, though you are still healing. But any time there's two damage on a creature, you can gain two amber rather than reaping and gaining one. All of the yes. Operations officer Ishi? Let's go for Ishi. Four power, two armor. That's quite good. With taunt. It's also a spirit which we don't see very often. Each of Operation Officer Ishii's neighbors gains fight or reap. Capture one amber. Cool. Each of your neighbors gets to capture an amber when they fight or reap. We've talked about why capturing is good. So now when you reap, you gain an amber and capture one. When you fight, you fight and capture an amber. This is cool. Psionic Officer Lang is a free power, zero armor creature and after an enemy creature reaps, you archive the top card of your deck. Now we talked about archiving earlier and I talked about how good it can be to deliberately archive a specific card or two to pull off a nuts combo later on in the game. This is not that. This could end up archiving from all three of your houses, such that when you pick up your archive, you end up with a bunch of cards you can't play, which are then clogging your hand, so you're not going to be able to draw enough at the end of your turn. There is a lovely combo here with Navigator Alley, whereby you can know what's on top, so that you can archive deliberately oh no wait there isn't because it's after an enemy creature reaps you archive the top card of your deck this could go really well or really wrong you could end up just archiving a whole bunch of random cards and then just not being able to draw however counter argument your opponent reaps seven times you put seven cards in your archive you're going to have a monster turn soon. Just be aware you may end up with a handful of cards that you then cannot draw at the end of your turn. But having said that, you were going to draw them anyway. They just ended up archived first. So, I don't know. Maybe this is better than I initially thought. Special Agent Fingers. One power, zero armor. Crikey, that's weak. But you can see it's clearly kind of a shadows creature that defected to the Star Alliance. Got elusive, which is good. And it's got an action, steal an amber. It is literally a... Sh I mean, it's even an elf thief, for goodness sake. It is a shadows creature that joined the Grand Star Alliance. And it's exactly what you might expect. It's, well, it's, it's, it's urchin, basically. Well, it's not quite urchin. It's a one-power creature that steals amber. Thing is, urchin does it when you play it. This is as an action. And frankly, even with elusive, you're a one-power creature. It ain't always gonna work. And finally, Tekavor Pulpate, a 5 power, 0 armor creature. After a player chooses an active house, destroy each artifact of that house. Yowza. And essentially here, ladies and gentlemen, it's extremely simple. This sucks if you're relying on artifacts. And it's great if you're not relying on artifacts. Seriously. If you're not in an artifact heavy deck, you put this down and your opponent... I mean, this is like the ultimate artifact hate. Your opponent wants to play shadows. They lose all the shadows artifacts. And incidentally, it is each artifact of that house. Not each of their artifacts. Or each friendly artifact. What that means is if your opponent's got three Shadows Artifacts and you choose Shadows, they lose their Artifacts. If you've got a deck that wants to use Artifacts, this sucks. If you don't, this is awesome. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are all of the creatures of the Grand Star Alliance. I love the Grand Star Alliance. I am absolutely in love with them. I think they're absolutely brilliant. I love the design. I love the theme. And I think there are some really great cards in here. But I'd like to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. And follow me on Twitter at the Wussy, Where we talk Transformers and Keyforge and, and all kinds of good stuff. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that.
But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would you? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching Wassy Plays.